Okay, so it's a pleasure um, to introduce um, Shijin Zhang, did I say that correctly? Yes. Um, who's a grad student at University of Pennsylvania, um, has been working on large, very large-scale graphs. Um, we're talking now graphs with billions of edges. We've got certainly several examples of those at Microsoft, obviously, that um, in um, services like LinkedIn and, and, and others. Um, so this is all very relevant to what goes on here, and he's going to tell us how to get huge performance improvements with some new process, gra um, query processing techniques. Yeah, thanks for the introduction. Uh, this is actually my uh, SIGMOD presentation. Uh, so the, our paper is about how to optimize declarative graph queries at large scale. And uh, this is joint work between uh, UPenn, uh, CHK, and Rice University. So a uh, graph has been uh, important in the data structure to represent different types of real-world relationships. Uh, for example, we have web graphs, we have social networks, road networks, and people run different graph algorithms on those graphs. And real-world graphs have been uh, increasingly growing large, and currently they scale from binning edges to even training edges. So you can definitely process small-scale graphs or mid-scale uh, graphs in single machine or small cluster, but the largest graph workloads are deployed at massive scales, uh, specifically in public clouds and data centers. So for those large deployments, people normally want uh, robustness because those large environments have a lot of uh, variables, for example, uh, network failures, link degradation. So you want your system performance to be robust under those dynamics. People also want uh, ease of programming to easily express their ad hoc graph queries. And they also want good performance to have the answer quickly. However, given current systems, uh, it's difficult to achieve those three requirements. Some systems have uh, ease of programming, but they don't have good performance, while some systems have good performance, but they're difficult to program. There are two particular challenges for large-scale graph query processing. The first is the impact of uh, real-world graph characteristics. Uh, specifically, real-world graphs have power distribution, uh, which indicates that the optimal query execution may differ based on which part of the graph is being processed. Uh, real-world graphs uh, are also highly collected, which indicates that during the query execution, there will be a lot of duplicates being generated. The second challenge is the impact of data center uh, characteristics. As I'm going to show you later, uh, uh, those, uh, there is a set of consistent design principles in current, in modern uh, data center networks, and which can make the query execution inefficient if you ignore them. So we propose graph Rex, uh, which stands for uh, graph recursive execution. So firstly, we uh, we, pro uh, we provide a data lock like interface to the users, which is declarative and easy to program. Uh, during the query execution, we use the knowledge of uh, real world graphs to have good performance. And we also use the knowledge of data center network infrastructure to have both performance and robustness. So here is the overview of our, of our system. We first provide a, a declarative interface to users so that they can write data log queries. And then the queries will be compiled to logical plan, which is further com uh, constructed uh, into uh, execution specification, uh, which contain the global operators. The global operators uh, are the, uh, a set of operators that, that are going to be optimized at a runtime. And this is a, con a key contribution of this paper. And after that, the execution specifications will be sent out to every worker uh, where we run a distributed semi-naive algorithm to execute based on the execution specification. So our paper has more detail about this uh, query, query processing pipeline. Uh, in this talk, I'm going to focus on how we use the, uh, the knowledge of the graphs and the data center infrastructure to make the query execution efficient. So for, the, for the rest of the talk, I'm uh, going to first give a brief background about data center network, and then I'm going to talk about uh, two optimizations. One is about data center centric, uh, one is about graph centric. And then I'm going to show you the, uh, the uh, evaluation results and then conclude this talk. So, as I just mentioned, uh, there is a set of consistent design principles in current uh, data center networks. So here is the ex uh, classic example of a data center network. Uh, so we have a bunch of uh, servers that are connected to the top of rack switch, and then the top of rack switch are connected to the rest of the network, which is oversubscribed. 
So uh, at high level, the oversubscription means that the uh, the lower of the net, the lower levels of the network have uh, have lower communication costs than the high levels of the network. For example, the communication uh, the communication between racks uh, is much uh, is much more expensive than the communication within each rack. And people uh, people there are several reasons for uh, for this oversubscription. Uh, so firstly, people intentionally designed the, the data center network to be oversubscribed to make it cost efficient. And the link degradations and link network failures can also cause uh, uh, oversubscription. And uh, the background traffic in data centers can magnify the impact of uh, oversubscription. So if you deploy your system in the, like, uh, in, at large scale, then you have to consider this, this char characteristic. So I'm going to show you how we uh, how we optimize uh, the query execution uh, for large uh, graph queries by including this uh, data center infrastructure characteristic. So our optimizations are uh, applied at global operators, uh, which is in execution specifications. The execution specification is uh, is compiled and optimized from the data log queries. So the paper has more detail about this. I'm going I'm going to show you the global operators. So the global operators is a set of uh, operators that we identify as the performance bottleneck to the to large scale graph query processing, um, and we optimize those operators at runtime by looking at the graph characteristics and infrastructure characteristics. So there, are, specifically, there are four global operators. In this talk, I'm going to focus on two, focus on two of them. Uh, the shaft, uh, which is for efficient shuffling, and the route, which optimizes uh, multi-way join queries. So the first operator is shaft, uh, which encompasses most network communications in our system. Uh, let's say we have a data center which has uh, multiple racks, and every rack has, uh, has two, two servers, and every server has two workers. So in the execution, every worker generates a set of, tu a set of tuples that are going to be shuffled into the network. Let's say the destination is in another rack uh, of the data center. So in basic shuffling, what it does is, is that the, uh, those tuples are directly in, sent into the network and to be delivered to their destination. But this is suboptimal because it ignores the data center structure. What we can do better is, uh, is we can include this uh, data center structure into the, into the shuffling. So we can first consolidate the tuples within, within each worker. And then we perform a local shuffle within each server to uh, consolidate the tuples uh, in, uh, in each server. And then, again, we can perform a local rack-local shuffle to consolidate the, uh, the tuples within each rack. And then, finally, we can shuffle the, the consolidated tuples into the network to be delivered. So what we do when we consolidate those messages, those tuples, is, we, uh, is to apply our optimization, which is caramelization and uh, compression. Here is one example. Let's say we have a table which has three variables, uh, V, A, B, and uh, there's a set of uh, tuples that are going to be shuffled into the network. So what we do is we first sort those tuples by their attributes so that we, we put, the, uh, the similar, put the tuples that have similar values together. And then we, we slide each column and to store them individually. And then we compress those, uh, those columns. And the compressed data is the final data uh, that are going to be shuffled into the network. So the, the effectiveness of the caramelization and compression is magnified by a second optimization, which is a hierarchical network transfer. So at high level, the, uh, the, the hierarchical network transfer, network transfer is that at every level of the network, we consolidate the messages, the tuples, and then we apply caramelization and compression. So the purpose of doing this is that we, we leverage the, the oversubscription uh, um, to, uh, to, to consolidate the message in a lower level of the network, and then we, we reduce the communication cost into the higher level of the, of the network. So in this, in this way, we can like, reduce the communication cost. So we compare our optimizations with the, the tuple uh, compression uh, method. Uh, so we found that if you if you only apply the compression directly on tuples, then the improvement is insignificant. So while our optimization work much better. 
So the second optimization is a uh, second operator is route, which is uh, which is for multiple join queries. So let's look at one example of multiple join. Uh, this is a classic uh, a query, uh, same generation, which is to generate a, a pair of vertices at each uh, generation, starting from a root. Uh, so this is essentially a three-way join, where we join edge table with sg table, and then we join with edge table again. So we, we, this three-way join is to generate the new tuples in SG table. So at a re because this is a three-way three join, uh, it's, um, at a relation level, there are two orders. So the other one is from left to right, where we join, where we join uh, edge table and SG table, and then we join uh, to generate the intermediate results. And then we join the intermediate results with the edge table again. The other two is from right to left, where we, we from uh, from right to left, um, where we join uh, SC table and uh, edge table, and then we join uh, edge table with the uh, intermediate results. Let's look at how those two orders work. Um, so here's one example of a tree uh, where we have a root which has two children A, B. So initially there is uh, there is only one tuple which is S, G, A, B in the in the S, G table. For next generation, uh, the cost of, of order one is three because A has three children, and it has to send those three children to B to join with B's child. So the cost is three. Uh, in comparison, order two has the cost of one because B has only one child. It, it just needs to send this child to A to join with A's children. So the cost of order two is one. So in next generation, the situation is going to be different uh, because in the left branch, there is only one child, while in the right branch, there, there are three children. So the, the cost of, of order one is one, the cost of order two is three. So as a result, the total cost of those two orders are the same, and they are equally bad. So if, you, if we run this, uh, this query in real-world graphs, it's going to be much worse because real-world graphs have power law degree distribution, and which has a large, much larger uh, variance between the degrees of the vertices. So our, we propose adaptive join ordering, which essentially enumerates uh, all possible join orders for every uh, newly generated tuple, and we select the best order for each of them. So again, let's look at this example. For SCAB, uh, which we select the join order from uh, right to left because B's degree is lower than A's degree. For next generation, all the tuples will have the order from left to right because the left, left vertex has lower degree than the right vertex. And in the next generation, it's going to be different again. So as a result, we have, uh, we have the co total cost of, of two in this example, and this is the optimal in this example. So we compared our optimization with the best static ordering, uh, and uh, our uh, optimization works significantly better. So finally, I'm going to show you some uh, evaluation results. So firstly, the, uh, our data center uh, has two racks. Every, every rack has uh, 20 servers. So in aggregate, we have 1.6 thousand uh, CPU threads, and we have uh, 6.4 terabyte memories. And all the network, in, network links in our, in our data center are 10 Gbps, which results in a 5 to 1 over subscription ratio, which indicates that the communication between racks is uh, 5x higher than the communication cost within each rack. And we test our system on, uh, on four real-world graphs, graphs, which are all about binning skill. We, we first tested the overall performance uh, we compared our uh, our system with both a high level system like the big data log which is which is a data log uh, distributed data log system on uh, apache spark and we also compared with low level system like giraffe and paragraph and we found that our system is much better than uh, performs much better than other systems uh, the sp the speed up ranges from uh, 4x to uh, 54x and we also tested the multi join query performance. Uh, we tested our system uh, and other systems by using both the synthesized data and the real world data. And we found that our system performs, uh, again, like significantly better than other systems. Uh, the speed up on real world graphs uh, is like uh, 3.3x. And on synthesized data, we have like, more than two orders of magnitude better performance. 
We also tested the robustness of those systems. Uh, specifically, we inject a random network uh, link failures into the network. And then we also control the, uh, the number of switches in the, in, in the network to vary the oversubscription ratio. And we found that uh, under, under such dynamics, our system has, uh, has the most robust uh, performance. So the x-axis are the, var uh, uh, the environment dynamics, and the y-axis is the execution time. So uh, this is our system. And uh, yeah, it is very robust. So in conclusion, uh, firstly, uh, we, uh, we observed that the network communication is the performance bottleneck to large-scale graph query processing. And secondly, if you want to achieve uh, ease of programming, robustness, and good performance, then you have to co-design the interface and the optimizations. And finally, uh, if you want your uh, uh, large-scale gra uh, graph query processing to be efficient, then it is very important to look at the characteristics of both graphs and uh, data center networks. So as a future, uh, potential future direction is to query uh, graph streams. So this is, uh, this is interesting because uh, the, the streaming, uh, process, streaming queries are normally long running. And during this long uh, execution, long time execution, there will be a lot of dynamics that can happen in, uh, in both the, 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 the resources and the, um, and the input data. And the failures can also happen during this long time execution. So this indicates that there is no fixed plan, no early binding plan, which is optimal, because there will be a, like a lot of changes do, uh, which will happen during the execution. So you have to dynamically decide which plan is better. And the, uh, and the optimizations have to consider like multiple dimensions, uh, the workloads, the input data, uh, and the infrastructure. And because there, there will be a lot of changes, will, that will happen during the execution, so you have also uh, you have also need to uh, like consider such dynamics. Yeah, so that's it. Uh, thanks for your patience, and uh, I'm happy to take questions. How much is it, you got, you're showing some big, pretty big performance differences to those base systems? Um, yeah. That's surprising. I mean, is this, are they are they really terrible? I mean, what what is, what why and 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 is this uh, and is the difference primarily due to you, you talk most you talk about shuffle and and join yeah. ordering? Yeah, is that the primary source of, of, of the performance difference? Did you actually turn optimism or turn aspects of your system on and off to figure out what it was you were doing that had the most impact? Yeah. Okay. So I uh, I showed two uh, optimizations. One is like the data center, which is shuffling, right? So I think uh, because uh, we focus on like re massive scale graph query processing, uh, so count the existing systems they focus on like small scale. They don't they don't consider such like uh, like infrastructure like dynamics, right? Uh, uh, nature. Because if you only run your uh, run your system in a small cluster, then that's time machines. It's easy to connect those those time machines by a high capacity switch, right? So you don't have to consider such like oversubscription. Uh, but if you deploy your system into this massive scale, then the oversubscription matters a lot. That's that's our finding. Yeah. Is that the main source of, of the performance difference? Is is, is the you know, yeah, identifying for, the tuning it to the um, to the network infrastructure? Yeah, for uh, shuffling, yes. And uh, the, sec um, the second optimization I mentioned is about graph-centric, which is like, uh, they, like f some, some existing systems like uh, big data log, they, they, focus, like, they focus more on like, general data log queries. So if you want to make it uh, the graph query pro uh, processing efficient, then you have to consider the graph nature, which is like real, which is like power or degree distribution uh, uh, in real world graphs. So like, we found this is also very, uh, like, so like very important. To be, yes. To be important. Yeah. Um, so you talked at the end about future work about um, dynamic um, being being able being able to um, basically change plans based on what you're seeing in the yeah. data. So yeah. things like graph structure, maybe you can't really predict that. It's not a static, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, not a, it's not a static graph. Um, yeah. 
how would you, do you have any ideas on how you, you would be able to um, make similar kinds of, Operation. get similar kinds of insights to the data while, you know, in flight coming in? Have you given any thought to that? It seems very hard. Yeah. Um, um, that's a good question. Uh, um, I mean, no is a fine answer. I just wondered whether you'd given it some, some thought already. Yeah, I, I thought about the, uh, the, the infrastructure aspects. Like, uh, there, there, uh, there are some papers, like OSDI papers, which is, I think it's called QOP, which, which, which like, uh, argues that there are, uh, if you run multiple workloads, right, uh, multiple queries in a, in a cluster, then, then the, as the queries come and go, then the, the resource can change a lot, right? Mm -hmm. So you have, to, so do, in the, so, uh, in one query execution, the, the resource can change from like a big, big cluster into a small cluster. The, this, uh, this because the availability of the resource can change. So, uh, I think this is because streaming uh, streaming queries uh, is now running, so this is definitely true for for streaming queries. Uh, but for uh, for for updates for the if there will be uh, like um, uh, updates to the graph, uh, uh, I think um, yeah. I um, I, found, I haven't thought uh, carefully about the, the the input graph part. Uh, but I think could be it, it, it's definitely more challenging than the static graph, yeah. And and there are some uh, uh, there are some um, assumption of of our our optimization, which is about the graph centric optimization. Because uh, so when we when when we do adaptive joint ordering, we we have to look at the degree of every vertex, right? So so we we build an indexing for like we have an indexing uh, which stores the the degree of every vertex. So if this information changes, then you have to build the indexing again. So which is can be expensive. So I think it's definitely more challenging. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty interesting. Yeah. There are other questions? No? Okay, thanks very much. Thank you.